Klima Media is talking to political analyst Aubrey Machiki about the prospect of nationalizing South Africa's mines and the ironies surrounding that. In South Africa, we have this great irony of the communists saying no to nationalization and the capitalists saying yes. Give us an analysis of that. Firstly, I think some of the protagonists are turning their personal clashes and personal differences into national issues. We must differentiate political issues from ideological issues. So when the SACP says it is opposed to the call by the ANC Youth League to nationalize mines, their opposition is not based on ideology. Um, it is based on political considerations. It is their view that uh, the ANC Youth League is positing a proxy argument on behalf of certain business interests. In other words, they are a Trojan horse for certain business interests. And where are we going to end up in South Africa? Well, firstly, we should not take everything that is being said about nationalization seriously. Because when politicians um, make statements, uh, those statements tend to have two dimensions, the noble and the ignoble. And uh, sometimes when politicians make statements, um, they seek to achieve a multiplicity of aims, some genuine, some opportunistic. And that is how we should read um, the content of uh, this debate. Secondly, there is no single policy measure or intervention that can be uh, a panacea for the problems and challenges uh, facing the country. And that is why it has been my argument that even if the ANC does not pass a resolution calling for, nationalize, uh, for nationalization of mines, something I don't think will, will, will happen uh, personally. That's the least of my worries. Whether we should nationalize mines or not is the least of my worries. We have a situation in this country where about 60% of the population is under the age of 30. Ordinarily, we should be happy about that because it means South Africa has a bright future. Uh, we have this human resource uh, potential. We can deploy socially, economically, and in other ways to take the country forward. But this opportunity is being squandered by the fact that um, many of these uh, <coughs> young people are not in a job, are not in training, um, and are not uh, receiving an education. In fact, depending on which research study uh, you prefer, uh, people put the figure at about 4 million. But we have another problem. Uh, we have this young population, but this young population is dying young. Uh, depending also on which uh, research study uh, you want to believe, uh, our life expectancy is either at 48% or at 52%. Or if you take uh, what uh, the health minister has been saying, um, if the current developmental trajectory doesn't change, our life expectancy is going to fall to 1965 levels. So it seems to me that a, a society that is faced with the challenge of being young and dying young at the same time must address two critical challenges, education and health. And access to education and health must be the key challenge uh, we address as a country. Now, it is not obvious to me that uh, nationalization of mines or anything for that matter is an effective response to these challenges. South Africa is known to go to the precipice and then they do things. Perhaps we can rally around this whole unemployment issue. Well, we tend to talk past each other, particularly when it comes to the conversation, if you can call it a conversation, between the state, big business and big labor. Um, those social partners tend to um, talk past each other. Secondly, we tend to take extreme positions and forget that the majority of South Africans believe that the solution to many of our problems uh, lies in the middle. We need a, con a conversation in this country that will transcend uh, these problems. But it also seems to me that um, you, you cannot posit 100% privatization as an answer, nor can you posit 100% nationalization as an answer. Um, we, we need a conversation away from the two extremes. 
And of course, uh, between the two extremes lies a plethora um, of models. And the conversation you must have is what kind of model will be an effective response to the unique position South Africa finds itself in. We tend to swing between um, what I call hysterical pessimism and hysterical optimism. It is because we allow those who tame, I mean, who take extreme positions to drag us to those uh, extremes. We allow them to polarize us as a society, when in fact most of us know instinctively and otherwise that the solution lies in the middle. So it is time for the middle to take over and abandon and reject the extreme. That was South African political analyst Aubrey Machiki giving us the insight into the nationalisation debate.